We're yes, speaking today with Jerry Dixon, who's a candidate, incumbent candidate for Port and Waterway Group 3. Correct. I mean, Jerry, I want to change up, I want to be a change for you. Feel you free. to talk about why you want to do this, but I think it's really important here for the people out there. First off, if you could do a couple things for me. Tell me what the heck the Port and Waterway Board is, why it's important, and if you don't mind what what the budget is and where you guys are, the area from where you're well, getting the tax money. Could I but, just, but mainly what you are. I will do all that. Sure. I'd just like to introduce quickly for some people that don't know me, uh, who I am, quickly. And I'll make it That's fairly perfect. concise. Uh, I first came to San Jose in 77. I've lived here permanently since 87. In fact, there was one traffic light then, and the record used to be downtown. And we can go. I was here for the dedication of this building. Okay, so been a long-time residence. And actually, I moved here because I wanted to sail. Um, I'm from Colorado, and I'm a skier. And uh, because of my involvement in the water, and I do sail, and I brought some photographs to pass around. But I do captain a 45-foot sailboat and have been for some years. So I became a member of the Port, or got interested in the Port Authority by a former member, and that was Jack McGinnis many, many years ago. And I think I've been on the board 16 years or so forth. Um, and we'll talk about why I'm running and how I'm running, but let's go back to the Port Authority. Port Authority was incorporated about, by the state legislature in 38, 39, mm -hmm. uh, about a part of early 40s, and that was to construct the new inlet, which is the inlet that we see, because the inlet, natural inlet, went through Salt Run and out. And in fact, if you were in the, if the people that grew up here in the 50s and 60s, uh, if you were at the Concast, you actually saw the breakers in the ocean over there. All that has created in with the man-made inlet. The Port Authority then was put together to be a uh, sponsoring agent uh, grant, uh, chartered by the state legislature. I think we actually have the right to have an airport if we want to be in that business. But, And the boundaries of the Port Authority, I don't know if you have a map, I think you have something that might be in front of you. It only encompasses a part of the county. It was the county population at the time. In essence, it goes from here to Guana uh, to 95 out here, and then about the shores, and then on the island, uh, all the way down the, the inlet and up to, again, Matanzas Park, practically. We are a taxing district. We we have a, uh, we have no employees. We uh, I first got involved and went to meetings back before I was on the board, and they had they weren't taxing at all. I think if you look, I know on my property tax, I pay about nine or ten dollars. It's not it's not substantial. In fact, you know a beer tab is higher than that. Um, we have as a group. Myself and others have, I think we've done an excellent job. In fact, the Colorado Wildlife Com uh, Waterway Commission, no, is it CW? They just had their meeting here last week, and it's the first time they've been out of Tallahassee because our authority, Port Authority, and the inlet of the harbor is between St. Augustine and that's me, um, has done an excellent job, and I'll explain that. But in essence, we make about 300000 a year, we have about 100000 in overhead, we hire engineers, we hire secretarial services, we hire legal services, and we have an office at the city for reasonable fee and so forth. And we hire our consultants. Our primary function as when we were in the state was to make the maintenance of the inlet. The true maintenance of the inlet was granted to the by the federal government because they built it, the Army Corps of Engineers was to the Corps of Engineers, just like the Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for the uh, intercoastal waterway. As time has gone on, their funding and the federal funding has gotten less and less, and it becomes more us, or us, us meaning the county, the Port Authority, and others to uh, find funds and, it, and become agencies, per se, to funnel this stuff through maintenance. Um, on the inlet side, which is our primary function, uh, we've been very successful, and that really goes back to Emmy Pacetti and all that when they did the shoot, Congress got the fact that the man-made inlet caused the erosion of St. Augustine Beach, and I, if you were around in the mid-90s, if you went to the beachcomber, it actually dropped off six feet. Now there's a dune so high you can't see the ocean anymore. Uh, that became because we took the sand from the inlet and put it on the beach. 
that funding from Congress, which was a 50-year program, but funded every five years. So we just finished the last one in a year or two. Um, was really a maintenance. Was really a maintenance um, of getting sand for the for the beach. What's really neat here, because of the port authority, we've been getting the sand from the inlet, taking it. So we get the inlet dredged, and we get the beach built up together. Um, so that's our primary function. The secondary function is uh, working with fine on the intercoastal. And lastly, Salt Run is not under federal jurisdiction, but us, our local jurisdiction. And we have, are responsible for the dredging of it. And you will notice that I think we just finished it, another dredging part of it this year. Um, I said we made 300,000 a year. We have about 200,000 a year extra. We've, uh, our costs have gone up in the last few, but we have managed that we have about a million eight in the bank. Uh, I brought my thing here. Our revenues this year is going to be 394,000, and our expenditures this year are going to be 395 right now. I mean, we're, we kind of have it balanced. And, and now that 262,000 of what we call district projects. What we primarily have done on dredging and big ticket items is we work with, with FINE in the Far East Coast, for an inland navigation district, and we become the matching funds. So in the case of Salt Run, because it, we are dredging up to the inlet as a public way, we get 75-25. So this year we're spending 100000 of our money, but we're getting about 300000 <coughs> between that and a dredging program on San Sebastian. So we, we leverage our money for things. We've used our money on occasion for, like, uh, Council of Aging. We helped them with their bulkhead and built that dock. Uh, again, public type of usage. We've done a number of kayak launching facilities. We've assisted the county in a number of parks and rec projects. But we typically fund and leverage our money. Um, we worked with the city a lot because they own the bottom. The state, when derelict boats, used to have funds to remove derelict boats. Well, that all dried up on the economy. We have spent about $90,000 in the last eight years. The city has done all the administration at their cost, and we've removed over 100 derelict boats. Uh, that's working with uh, the city, the city yard, city employees. Uh, they do the, we provide the funds for it, they provide the, 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 the process. By that, I mean they do the police work, the, they do the bidding process, they oversee the contractor and the removal and pickup. Uh, I, we also worked with the city on their mooring fields, which is collated to derelict boats and some of the others. And the city is also one of five cities on the pilot program, which the state gave five cities the right to kind of make their own rules to see how it works. Because Free anchoring and anchoring in boats is just a giant issue in the state. We have really maneuvered this through the, our board and others uh, to a really workable program. Uh, I just read in one of my sailing magazines a big article because people in South Florida particularly don't want you to be able to anchor in the water, which is state waters, in front of their big home. Uh, they want it like no, or 300 feet, which makes all the waterways in South Florida. And I, I, we did something good. I think we made it 50 feet. And I will say people in Davis Shores and some other places had raised some concerns. Um, it's been very manageable. Uh, we've gotten rid of, we haven't, we've worked a lot with the, the boating program, the boating community. We do have free anchorage. We have, the, on the mooring fields of the city, the, the fees for city city people it's considerably less than transient, but they're still very, very fair compared to any South Florida we use as an example. So the port over the last 10 years or 15 years I've been on, one is we have a reserve. We did, we've helped a number of times. One of the things when they do, uh, we have to, we've had a couple of storms or we've done some dredging on the beach. We've had to do turtle monitoring. Uh, we've helped fund that. We've done planting of sea oaks on the dunes, both with, for, working with the city of St. Augustine Beach and so forth. So this is some of the things we've done. Um, and right now we're in pretty good shape, i.e. we've managed to get the inlet working with the Corps, Coast Guard, um, to a very manageable position. I'm a boater. 
as I said here, I'll show you. I just want to show you that. I'm not kidding. I run a 45-foot sailboat. It's big. I've been doing this for a number of years. So when it's talking about going through the inlet, dealing with buoys, markers, and so forth, uh, here, and I'm at the conch house, so I know what salt runs like. Uh, I'm somewhat I'm experienced at it and I enjoy it. Decided I'd do it one more term, actually. Okay. I got a question for you. <clears throat> Um, it doesn't come up every year, but it, it ought to come up every four years. But you guys, again, you, your taxing district is kind of screwy and just takes up a little bit. But every year there's some talk about about open. I can show them the map of it. But oh, I have it's, just, it's, it's, it's quite screwy. Yeah, it, it looks like Kareem Brown's just congressional district. But anyway, there's there's always some talk of that you guys could expand to a countywide tax base. Is that on? Is that on? It's been, it's, it's, it's been discussed, but the reality <clears throat> of that is it takes the legislature to pass it. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have to deal with a local representative to get it through committee, you get it to the floor, and get it passed. Um, we've always been quite discouraged by those particular parties, and you, so you want me to pass a bill to tax people that live in Julington Creek that have nothing to do with the inland. Um, it's probably something that may have that should be done in the future. I'm going to say because, as I said, the inlet and funding from the federal sources is getting tougher and tougher. And uh, even though they're obligated to do it, they're, if they're, they don't fund it, it's not going to happen. And I can see, foresee a problem in the future. Tied to that is the new inlet management plan that the state is doing with the county. And obviously, you're hearing about the residents of Bolano Beach. That's a controversial issue, but. They're requiring they want sand put back up towards Volano. Uh, Volano people have said when we dredged the inlet, we made their beach road more. And it's, don't, I don't personally believe any of that, and that's not what the engineers say. But because barrier islands come and go and so forth. But they do have an issue. They do have property that is worth quite a bit of money. Um, the difference between Volano and I'll say in St. Augustine Beach is St. Augustine Beach is a public beach. So you drive on the beach, and that's really our economic engine. Volano Beach is north, it's pretty difficult to get to. Uh, you can't drive one for sure, and to find parking and then access to it is still limited. So they're almost like private beaches. But in either case, the state is requiring 25% of dredging material to go north. Uh, the permitting of that alone is going to cost a half court, $200,000 to $250,000. And how you do it, I'm not sure. So these are some, these are some of our current issues that we are dealing with. So, so increase this, the, the district, we're going to need some more money. I said we don't tax a lot. We have no employees. I uh, said so we get a million seven in the bank in reserves. Um, we do that if we need. If you need a quick million dollars for a match on an emergency dredging, we have the ability to do it, and that's why we hold a little bit of money back. Uh, but a greater money reserve for the future is probably imperative. But the process of getting there—the only place that's been successful to do that was the mosquito control. But then people out there said, I have the need for mosquito control. And I don't, so I don't know how difficult that will be politically. In today's climate, probably still difficult, better today than it was two years ago. Here's a big question. <clears throat> There's a lot of boaters who said that, well, it's not just said that two years ago and as much as a year ago, the inlet, we lost boats in the inlet. We did. Was that the Port Waterways fault? Was that? Army Corps' fault? It's Army Corps' fault. I mean, they're the ones that are responsible party. Okay. It's also, in the case of <clears throat> we are a non-commercial port compared to Jacksonville, Cape Canaveral. We're a little bit like Daytona. We're a non-commercial port. The difference in Daytona, they have a Coast Guard station right there and a Coast Guard cutter. So they have buoys the red and the greens that are permanent and they're on a chart. Ours are on a no chart they're, because they move. And, and any, if you're a boater, and, you're, and anybody can say they're a boater, so there's no licensing required, but if you're running a boat, it's up to you to make yourself knowledgeable. Uh, and if you went straight, or you hug the right side of the channel, it got shallow. We had a couple of boats, particularly a sport fisherman that took two props off. You read about that. And that was because the sand had come around the corner. 
we, where we used our money, as an example, they have a thing called a hopper dredge. Uh, it kind of scoops up dirt, puts it in the boat, and then the boat goes out and dumps it somewhere. The uh, Army Corps has one of these vessels, has two of them, out, but they're up in Charleston. Carl Blow, that you know, was on our board, he's with Fine, found out they were going to do some work in Daytona. You know, we got on the phone, quick call, what about stopping here? Well, we don't have any money. We'll pay for it. If you'll stop here, we'll pay for it. We actually sent a delegation to Washington, D.C. to get that to happen. Um, that's where having money in reserves work to help cut that problem down. It's since been taken care of with the last major dredging, and we also got some money from Sandy, ironically enough, and we did some more dredging last year, so the inlet's in pretty good shape right now. But it's still, and, and the co uh, we keep on top of the Army Corps and the Coast Guard as far as location of buoys. Right now they're actually too far north and come back south again, they're supposed to do that the next month. But it's that type of thing. Uh, but it's still up to the mariner to be knowledgeable and seek local knowledge uh, and coming in or going out. And things do change. Is Matanzas inside your jurisdiction? Is yes. <clears throat> yeah, that's where the county, city, county, county, city, <clears throat> county, county line, I guess. Yeah, I in that. that. That's getting to be a It is, a but really that's, a, that's a natural inlet that you know, they decided not to do anything with years ago. That's why the low span bridge. Remember, if you remember, they were talking about the high span bridge so they could inlet, and, and it had. That's coupled with what we think is the, uh, and we spent the $150,000 on working with the residents of Summerhaven on permitting that. Now, we're not going to pay for it to do the dredging, but we did the permitting. It's taken four and a half years. All that came about because obviously the ocean breached down there, and a few dump trucks where the sand and a little work would have solved the problem. But people in Tallahassee said, oh, you don't have a permit to do that. You can't do that. So nature took its course and ruined your fishermen are a great estuary for small fish, oysters, and so forth. Where if, if you were a developer and wanted to fill that in, it would never happen. So it's kind of ironic. And now we've been fighting the Audubon Society and birds because they now live there. And it's interesting. You can talk to those people. It's a worthwhile story, Summerhaven. But we did do the permitting for them, which we think we've just got finally. Will you also have much oversight with the Treasure Beach? Uh, no, that's county. County. Yeah. We're really in public stuff. Uh, we do fund, we fund overtime for the police department, city and county. We bought the fire boat for the city. We put the boat lift in for the fire boat, the police boat. We bought an outboard for the police boat. We help. We don't have staff, so we help the city and county uh, enforcement agencies, I guess. Uh, we said we helped the fire department get a fire boat that's turned to small boat that we got donated, but we still cost it about 20000 in total. Um, so we use our funds for those kinds of activities. What are the top uh, one or two uh, issues that you see facing the war for the next few years? I think the issue with Volano Beach and getting sand that way and future funding for the inland. And they're both big ticket items. I mean, we've been dealing with as I said, dredging salt run and so forth, we may spend 100000 200000 You can hit the million dollar <laughs> clips real fast when you get into stuff like that. And we don't, we're not that strong, we're really small. Do you take an active role in the fundraising, the, uh, the renewal of that? Uh, we take an active role in the sense of uh, writing letters and so forth. We get it. Going into this, one, we pay five dollars a month, okay? It's not for the money. And we have no staff, I mean, other than an engineer that we can ask to do things, and a secretarial firm that we can ask to do things, an attorney we can ask to do things, but it's really up to us to do it. And we've managed to keep our overhead down, and therefore we've had the reserves that kept our taxes down. And it's functioned well up to now, and I think it can. Um, I have a few parties on our board that are new, that I want to hire a full-time manager, Hundred that you know, I'm figuring figured. Their wages would be seventy, eighty thousand a year easy with, and then they want staff and they want this and that. Uh, we've managed not to do that. Instead, keep our money for what I, like I said earlier, seed money. We try to leverage it with other agencies. Uh, the bit uh, I'll use a good example. The, the we work with the county parks, 
Department. That little uh, floating dock at Volano Beach, uh, they didn't have the matching funds. When the county was going through a lot of growth on impact fees, they got money from Parks and Rec when you did a development, and all that stopped, all that running source stopped. Uh, we end up 100% paying for that dock. It's like 140 or 50 thousand dollars, but we do things like that. How do that. you prioritize those? How, how do you juggle the Bellano versus the Saint Augustine Beach? And we well, well, we we're doing that right now in yeah. budget hearings, but we kind of see what the we we do a little bit each year. They don't all come at once. Right. Um, I know the fire department is going to come back and ask for something like we bought. There are two yellow zo they're zodiacs. We bought a couple of jet skis for them. Even though the county has a lot more money than we do, uh, we are port waterway and beaches, so we use our funds in things like that. We're not in the we're not in the park business. We're not in the beach business per se. You know the management of it, uh, but we do help facilitate some of that. That is what we're being taxed for. and things like that. The beaches have a broader spectrum to the average citizen that's paying the tax mm -hmm. compared to. Going out the inland, if you don't have a big boat, it's really no big deal, even though it is an economic input to our community. But we've been forced enough that we've never been overwhelmed in one year. We've exceeded our budget and go into reserves, and we'll probably tap them at reserves a little bit this year. But our reserves sort of, we, also, we make interest on that, so we actually get some more money there that we actually spend every year. And I said we've had somewhere in a million seven to two million a year in reserves, pretty consistent the last 10 years even though we've been spending more than we can be actually getting in. But because like St. Augustine Beach has a mayor and city commission, do they lobby more for their projects? They haven't in the recent Bono? years. Who, who, they, no, they really, they, uh, actually the Bono people are pretty strong in their okay. community and groups over there. Uh, the beach has not come to us in a number of years because okay. everything's kind of smooth out there now. Uh, many years ago when we had the, uh, when Emmett Pacetti was mayor and so forth, obviously there was a pretty good strong contact. Uh, there was more so when the dunes started building up, and I know we helped in the planning of all the sea oats that are quite thick now. It's amazing to see that stuff. Uh, if you remember where the U.S. 1 or Beach Boulevard comes around the corner and it was going on your road, uh, the ocean was almost under the roadway, and we helped pay for some emergency dredging, which if you look at Salt Run, you'll see where the sand came from. Well, now it's all a big dune and covered with sea oats. So this, it has all worked for us, um, but in either case, we've never been overwhelmed in one year with too much. And if it's really important that can't wait a year, we have reserves to do that with. That's why I've been adamant of not hiring people. I don't want staff. Uh, we've managed to do that without it. We have the city as a staff, mm -hmm. truly. We have a very great relationship with the city. Uh, even though our district is greater than the city. And the city, and the city on the Bear Lake Boat Program, it does work outside the city limits. They'll take boats all the way up and down because we have, and they, we work with the county. It's really a good county-city agency uh, working relationship. And that's why the state came over here for their annual meeting, to see how we were doing things. What percentage of your, your budget, your revenue, uh, comes from taxation and what is- 100%. Taxes, no grants or anything? No, no. We are allowed to own warehouses and docks and so forth. And I, you're going to interview my opponent, so I better tell you before, if you haven't interviewed him already, but I switched seats to run against him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, why did they do that? Uh, and I don't dislike her personally. I'm going to tell you two reasons. The first reason, and the primary reason was, I've been on the board the longest, second to me, I think it's Barry Benjamin, who was, Barry was chairman. I think last February or March, at the end of the meeting, when comments by commissioner, commissioner on my left, Mr. Bliss, made a motion that I think we need a new chairman. That discussion, there was a second. And with no more real discussion, there was a vote to remove him. And just as quick, my opponent was made chairman. And I don't know how that happened, but it was pretty, anyway, that was one thing. Why did they want him removed? Because we have two, we had two new commissioners. Well, we have one two years ago, and that was Chuck Hennessy. Uh, and he ran against Carl Blow. You endorsed Carl Blow. Right, Carl's excellent for the community. 
personal friend, but he's an excellent voter and he's done great things for the community. Chuck Hennessy had never been to a meeting before. Never been involved. He still is always late if he doesn't miss meetings now. And then I had our, my opponent who got on the board four years ago, unopposed, never been to a meeting, never been involved, not involved in really, you know, but wanted to be involved in the community. And that's good. I mean, we need, we got a whole community of new people. You have a whole election of that going on here in the city. So this is nothing new. It's nothing new in Florida. It's now that I'm here, I don't like the way you do it. We're going to do it differently. But it's not so much that. Is my opponent was pushing, my opponent, bottom line, is an ex, my opinion, an ex executive that used to have people to delegate and have things done. He's, he's proponent for hiring staff. He wanted by he, proponent that we may, uh, entered into a real with McGinnis Real Estate to look for land because he wanted to buy a park and be able to dock and uh, spend money and raise and raise the mill levy. And these are things that I'm opposed to. And I really would have a, rather have a board that we've had. So I named three, two people that had never been on the never been involved in voting, moved here and really weren't familiar with the history and the situation. Not that they don't have good ideas, and not that we don't get along. We good meeting just the other day, or even with all the current things I'm talking about. But we have a philosophical difference, and I wanted somebody on the board. So my spot, I had somebody run, who's the dock master at the conch house, who knows a lot about voting. And I vacated my spot, and we'll see which one of us is left. But, and, I really don't want four more years doing the board I had, so instead of resigning, I'll take my chances. So that's the answer to your question why I'm doing it. But I have nothing personal against my opponent at all. He's actually tried very hard. He just bloviates a lot, but I don't see a lot of action. That's my opinion. <laughs> what, do you, what do you really think? <laughs> I just, you know, I'm getting old I got and randy. I don't care anymore. <laughs> 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 Trying to make me look bad, aren't you? No, no, you're my hero. <laughs> no, are there um, are there any other? I was going to ask you about the more specific differences mm -hmm. that you think you would make as opposed to, or difference, different decisions that you guys might make. I think I'm more channeled into the success we've had in the past and continue. Uh, we're not too far apart in the sense of uh, I'm just more familiar with the issues, and I'd rather have somebody else on the board that's familiar with the voting issues. That's why. The Harvard dock master at the Conch House I've known for 10 years, I thought it was per perfect. We really have a board made up of three people. Well, I shouldn't say that. Jay Bliss, who's not running, has moved here from outside, but knowledgeable boating. He was always the person out that, which in democracy is good. If we all agree, then we all go down crazy roads. And you get, you get this viewpoint and that viewpoint, then you blend them and you come up with something good. And I, and I congratulate that, and even though I'm a, somewhat been opposite points of Jay. I also have congratulated him because some of the things he pushed and said and how we've met in the middle, I'm talking about the mooring fields and docking, has made it a better program. So it's all, the diversity of opinion is not bad. I'm just getting old and tired. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask you one more thing that other people are asking that they've criticized the board about is that Salt Run is kind of a pet thing for you guys uh, as opposed to keeping, keeping Salt Run open and not spending money other places, do you? Well, the, the key problem we have with Salt Run, and, and this is because it takes <clears throat> where history and time goes back, it goes back, back 10, 14 years ago. Salt Run had sloughed in and uh, to where it was like, I draw five feet, I couldn't get in at low tide sometimes. But that's where the conch house and all this in case, I'm sorry, I didn't mention uh, the conch, Well, you come in, and then you hit the conch house, and you go all the way up to the lighthouse to the boat ramp. But if the deep draw vessels, and five feet deep, the larger vessels, and, and, and they do have large impact in the community in the sense you don't know it, but there are people that repair stuff and so forth, and, conch, and that's what the conch house does and so forth. But in either case, the maintenance of that fell to the Port Authority. As, as they, one of the things we have to do is replace most of the markers. There's, I have a thing in here, uh, we just photographed them all. That's our, the Corps doesn't do it, the state doesn't do it, it's ours. 
We were working with the Army Corps of Engineers to see to get them involved, and because it is a public use facility, because of the boat dock, the boat ramp, um, they were started a study, and that's what you have to do they against spend studies, and these are hundreds of thousands of dollars things. Um, they got into it, and all of a sudden they found out that, I don't know if I remember the, the terms right, Cobra or something, in the, when you were active in the paper as far as writing, we had that issue where the federal government passed some regulations dealing with development on the beach, and it hit Porpoise Point, and it hit houses that were already built down at Crescent Beach and so forth, uh, that you couldn't get property insurance, and federal money could not be spent, and these are places that were already built. And that's because somebody drew a map in Washington based on something many years ago. I'm trying to think of the initials that the state called it. In either case, we got involved in that, and all of a sudden the Corps said, oh, we can't do that. We can't spend federal money on that area because it's within that district. We said, well, we're not building anything. We're maintaining, well, we still couldn't do it. Don't, you know. So it was decided that if it's going to get done, we had to do it. So we spent two years or so, $200,000 to get the permits to dredge salt run. And then each year, or every other year, we've been slowly getting the thing down to its design depth. So we're finishing up really the last segment of it. So it's been a 10-year project that we're about finished with that we just can maintain. And I said we take 25% of our money and we get 75% from fine when we do that. The other one was San Sebastian, and we've been spending money in San Sebastian now. And one of the areas of San Sebastian is finding places to haul out materials. And that's why I was with this, against the city vacating a road that we could. City Commission, the PUD for the Lores property, they want to vacate a road. And as my understanding, you can't vacate public access to the water under the comp plan. Um, so we're working something out with that so that we'll have ability to haul out dredge material in the future if we need to, because we need access as land becomes more difficult. So those are really what we're down to is dredging is our primary function. Um, uh, the biggest, the voice that we, biggest voice we hear of discontent and concern is the residents in Bolano Beach wanting sand put back on the beach. And that's over and above what we norm. I mean, we're going to facilitate in permitting of that. Uh, the funding of all that is in the millions and millions, far exceeding what we have or the ability for us to even raise. Um, but we, we signed off to the state. The state took over and wrote the, we were the first harbor management plan and the state wrote it. We had one before that we wrote. The reality though is sand goes from north to south. So the sand you put up there is going to come back down here. One of the other issues that we're talking about, uh, and it came up, and I'll say Herb brought it up first, as far as an active discussion, not that we've been talking about it for 20, 15 years too, is trying to get this jetty reconstructed on the north side of which has settled down. Or not reconstructed, that sounds bad. We're talking about maintenance. That becomes a different category in funding for the core. Uh, <laughs> it's in its early stages. We're writing a letter back to the core because the core came down and looked at it and said, well, you know, if we put that back, then all the sand that goes over to Volano Point won't happen, and we won't have a place to get sand. And I said, well, what, wait a minute. The idea is not to get the sand in the inlet <laughs> and over there by the intercoastal. Um, so these are issues that are, but there are many millions of dollars. All we can do is to facilitate the preliminary studies of our engineers, correspondents, and, and, and then working with the different agents to try in a cooperative way. Anybody got anything else? Topic of a much better understanding. <laughs> wow. Is there anything we didn't ask you? Did you think uh, so? No, I think the best one is and I jumped on before you did is why I'm running against Herb. And Herb's a good guy. I don't just like Herb. How many hours a week do you spend doing this? It seems like it's... That's not that. Truthfully, it's not. We meet once a month. I've been around. See, what's different? There's another reason I decided I was talking to this, okay, to stay. I've worked with the people in the county or the city. You know, I... You've been here forever. You can make a phone call and you can call somebody. You know who to talk to. They know who you are. Mm -hmm. It works a whole different than when you don't, when you're new. Mm -hmm. 
uh, not that we all are new at some point in time, but it, it takes less time okay. when you have working relationships. And I have a, a great working relationship with the city, and they're probably our strongest. I mean, I do with the Parks and Rec, too, of course. But uh, You guys are real close to working with the Sheriff's Department. Too. And the Sheriff's Steve Department. Frickey, I think. Most, yeah, the Sheriff's Department of the pecking order is, and the Fire Department on the county side is less than the city side because mm -hmm. predominantly the population base that we're really working in is the inlet and all the things I'm talking about, the Salt Run and San Sebastian, are really in the city limits. One thing you guys chip in, don't, don't you fund a little bit of the artificial reef stuff too? Oh yeah. Okay. I didn't even get to there. Didn't we've get we've to that. done uh, twenty-five to fifty thousand a year on artificial reefs. We're getting ready to do a dump. We and there again, we work with Conquer County, and when we do work with Conquer County, it's on this county, city county line. We work with the airport authority. Uh, when they took down the US one bridge, the you know the bridge down here on US one. All that concrete was hauled to the airport, and they stored it. And then we, from there, we put it on barges and have dumped it with it through the Parks Department. Uh, Andy Campbell Ranch, we've done two or three jobs there. Um, I know there's a couple more coming. Carl, it's been Carl Blow's pet project that he still manages more than we do. We fund it. We got we got fifty thousand dollars, I think, in here for reef this year. It doesn't matter. Uh, but you guys, you guys pitch in with fine and with and with. Yeah, the only controversial thing, I mean, one of the things we do on a small level that always brings up controversy is we help fund the boat parade mm -hmm. um, the I mean, with the nice lights. But so does, it, but we get a, a yeah. half their money and the other half or two thirds or more than half comes from uh, the Tourist Development Council. Mm -hmm. And that's always like, is that our business or not? But I think it's, it's it's like the Fourth of July fireworks. Yeah. All I can say is, if you know the tourist development tax paid for it, it makes state, waiting in line at that traffic jam a little bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the same thing. Okay. Well, we appreciate you coming in. All right. Have a good time. You guys are having fun now. Thank you. You, you guys got all the good guys. You get them again in the second round, like city commissioners and county.